Hello. Look at us, Tim. We're dancing by ourselves today. Yes, we are. Absolutely. I yeah. I'm uh, at home today because I have to go host a gala right after this. But I, I know it's like you're in all of our busy, busy time of year this holiday season. And isn't it great that things are a little bit normal this year? Oh absolutely, my gosh! Absolutely, absolutely. There are events happening, and we can go and see people again finally. Right. Yay, Christmas time. Right. So and welcome we to do... If These Walls Could Talk with your hosts. I am Wendy Stewart. And I am Tim Moss. Yay. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. I am actually here at Pangea, where we do our show from every mm -hmm. week. Pangea supports the arts community. They have shows happening here just about every night, some mm -hmm. nights two shows. It is really Incredible. Come down here. If you're in New York, we're on 2nd Avenue between 11th and 12th Street. As a matter of fact, Tim, I did Kobe Cole's show here last night. Oh, yes. I'm so sorry I couldn't get down to that. It was, it was such, I love what Kobe Cole is doing. He does it the once a month. It's called Nouveau Riche. <laughs> Not that any of us are Nouveau or Riche, as Kobe would say, but it's a wonderful show. I mean, some of the talents we had last night, we had Marianne Piccolo, mm, David yeah. O, uh, uh, Viva, oh, right. um, you know, Kobe performed. It was unbelievable. And there I was, the only non-singer. But what I lack in notes, I make up for in comedy. Yes. Yay. Yay. So <laughs> I did a couple of my parody. And you know what? We had a really, really great time. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Really I'm going to be, actually, I'm going to be at two shows there tomorrow. I, I'm going to the seven o'clock is um, Tammy Faye. I'm oh, which you didn't Tamar. get to see. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Yay. let's tell everyone the, the name of that. It's called Tamar. It's fabulous. Yes. And I've got um, a 7 o'clock show tomorrow, so I'll be down there for that. And then immediately following is a memorial for Ari Gold So right. that Kevin Aviance put together. So I'm going to I'm gonna stay for that. So that'll you, be nice. I, I heard there were two things here tomorrow. Wow. I just mm -hmm. You know what? It's just uh, nonstop. What can we say? Yeah, yeah. But tonight for me, yes. I'm, I'm so grateful and so honored. Um, I was asked by the AIDS Healthcare Foundation there to host their holiday party, which also includes honor. Uh, which also includes um, the AIDS Center for Queens County, Iris House, and Thursday's Child. They're all all sponsoring this event tonight, and uh, it's going to be a huge event out in Brooklyn. And um, this being World AIDS Day, it's. Hi, that's very impactful. It'll be, it'll be an amazing night. Amazing. So it's, you know, um, my friends from the golden gaze had something that they say, which I totally agree with that performers are actually essential workers. Yes. So you're going to do the essential work tonight for mm -hmm. these wonderful organizations, raise money. So it, it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Just, just fantastic. I am over the moon about uh, today's guests. First, well, Ellen, firstly, firstly, uh, I just wanted to say yes. I don't normally get stage fright, you know, anymore going on stage. Oh. About the only thing that scares me anymore are horror films. So take that it away. That is right. And <laughs> what I was going to see, that's so funny because what scares Tim is horror films and what floats my boat are horror films. <laughs> I totally love horror films. Oh, I, I do too. One on Netflix is called We Have Always Lived in the Castle about these two twisted sisters. Love but it. I, I mean, I can go right down the list. And some Same of here. my favorite horror films were the Friday the 13th films. Well, right, right. Today on our show, we have an amazing actress. She was in Friday the 13th part seven. I yeah. believe she does not get killed off until the end, but she's going to tell us herself. But she also, when she's not doing horror films, you'll recognize her as one of the majors that was on Knott's Landing. Mm -hmm. She has quite a dossier of work under her belt, but she does specialize in the Queen of Scream. So we want to find <laughs> out more about that. Please welcome Laura Park Lincoln. Yay! Oh, hello, hello. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. You are looking totally gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. You. We just need a lot of glam in this world right now and just bring it. I agree. Thank you. I agree. And look, she got all dressed up for us. They, that, oh, okay. that's so sweet. No, I'm heading to the store after. Yes, right. To just oh, this old thing. Yes, <laughs> a little bit of shopping you're going to do later. So, thank you so much for being here uh, with you. us today. I first of all, 
I love that you do horror films. I know you do so much beyond that, yeah. but I keep going back to the horror film genre because it, it is fun. something. I've just always loved horror films because fun. They're, they're, thank you. I love that she, it's fun. It's absolutely fun. Yeah. Right. How, did you, how did you tumble into this genre, Lar? How did this happen for you? It, it found me. It found me as a young actress going on auditions every day, all day long, like we do. And this one bubbled up under a false name, so we wouldn't know what it was. And I figured out what it was, because I like scary movies. And then I booked it and worked and worked and worked on it. And there, there you have it. It was a unique installment in the series for the, the girl to be psychic and telekinetic, mm -hmm. to fight the monster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was really unique. And I so never die. You Love don't, it. you don't die. No, survivor. No. Mm -mm. That's why right, I didn't she's a survivor, Tim, and that's a credit to you that they wanted to keep your character going. Yeah, it it was very nice. I, you know, I I didn't do the next installment because I didn't have script, and I knew they always killed mm -hmm. off the, the final girls. Yeah. So I just waited it out, and lo and behold, thirty years later. I just shot the continuing story of this, that. It, this was called, what was it, Roseblood? Rose Roseblood, yes, Blood, yes. yes. Which just opened. And I understand that you also had some a lovely, not a necklace, but some lovely neckwear. I'm yes. not sure if you're ready to, to show that or not. I, you, absolutely. I, okay. I have been wearing this lovely neck brace. <laughs> that is, I, you, you know, know what, Laura, that is very <laughs> Freddy Krueger, but for your neck. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, if you had the Freddy Krueger mask, you could have like, I think we're on to something here. There you go. <laughs> no. Yeah, there we go. I, a new, like, a new monster here. Fashion <laughs> but yeah, well, go ahead and make yourself comfortable. Get get comfortable because uh, yeah, we've got right a lot now. to talk about. we got I'm a lot. Get achy. I'll put it on. I'm oh, okay. Right oh, I thought you wanted to put it. Yeah, you're welcome to put it on if you need to. So Yeah, anything goes <laughs> on this show. Like, it, you know, you want to change clothes or whatever. You want your you want to lay down. Lay down, can talk lay from down. the couch. That's fine. It's all about <laughs> all about the the talk. So, what do we owe the honor of this neck brace? Well, I was lucky enough to find out finally that I had the discs. You know, the degenerated disc yeah. oh. to the spine. Oh my! Goodness. A lot of pain for a lot of years, and and oh. found this incredible surgeon, and he fixed that. So I'll wear this for a few months, and. Uh, so far, going really well. I can tell that it's worked, and I'm very grateful and mm -hmm. looking forward to the next few months. So, so um, as an actress, I mean, how do you right? We're as talent, we're always supposed to be perfect, right? Never let them see you sweat, right? How do you deal with like you had to go to your your film opening. How right. do you deal with this? Well, I I I had three films that opened basically the same time oh, this last God. month, and so I I timed the premieres. I missed a couple because it was too mm -hmm. new. And this one, I was starting the six weeks of recovery, and I was able to fly a straight flight, fly back. I had my assistant there, Becca Rose, also an actress, working on a set today. Uh -huh. Film called Bad Habit, plays a crazy nun. I love uh, it. it. <laughs> and uh, she was there, and she runs the tables and meets. And so I was able to do it, and it was fine. A lot of people, I'm literally scarless. Uh, they mm -hmm. go in through the front for this surgery. If any ah. of your fans are having the surgery, it's called ACDF. And wow. they go in from the front because they don't have to move very much and go to your spine. Wow. And uh, I got to talk to the nurse that did my scar and she's, it's perfect. Wow. So, you know, that, that's amazing. Well, how, are you, how, how are you feeling? I feel really good. You know, you get tired, yeah. of course, but I feel okay. really good. I'm not in pain. And that's a new feeling for me, migraine pain. I, I mean, Tim, think about that. Like, well, I, that's what I picked up on. You said you were in pain all the time. All the time. And here you are, a performer, where you have to be at the top of your game. Let's face it. Mm -hmm. How many years were you in pain for, and how did you deal with that? I started getting migraines at 17. Oh. Many people. And I literally had one for, for 20, 20 years. It, it was constant. I, I would basically throw up on, on the set of not slanting every day. It's just a constant migraine. Can you imagine? Right. But, you know, if you can't get relief, you keep going. If you don't yeah. keep going, you lose everything you've tried to build. You're not doing your, your work. Yes. Yeah. So I, I feel like we get this adrenaline rush when we're on a set and we're working. Mm -hmm. If we just pull ourselves together 
and get there. It's wonderful. Michael J. Fox, you know, who suffers from uh, mm -hmm. from a, a disease. Parkinson's, and which my dad had, and I actually have a marker for it, too. So oh, I wow. think about it a lot. Well, you know what? I still got to get on with my life. As Well, he was a wonderful, wonderful, uh, inspiring person. In his book, he wrote a line in one of his books um, called, I think it was called uh, Lucky, Lucky Man, something like that. And he wrote a line that says he gets up in the morning and he turns, he, he goes to his bathroom, takes the hottest shower he can, takes all of his medication walks out of his shower and walks to the hallway where there's a mirror and he looks in that mirror and he says, I'm starting the day now. And he continues on. And I thought that yeah. sentence made sense. He had to do these things. Yeah. He turned it around to a point where he knew he could do the few hours that he could do. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, it meant a lot to me, that book, reading mm -hmm. that phrase. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I no, think and, yeah, and, describing and, inspiration here, incredible inspiration. Yeah. yeah. And also, I mean, being because uh, basically you'd have to act a lot like you're feeling fine. Yes. And even off camera. Yes. You know, you still yes. you still have to act and try to come uh, overcome that. It's it, that's yeah. so difficult to do. Yeah. And because pain, constant pain is so wearing. It just it, it is so out. exhausting. And, you know, you know, people don't believe you. Yeah. They, they don't. Pain you can't see, they don't believe. Mm -hmm. and, right. Well, they don't, oh, you've got a little pain. And so those of us that have had it, we learn to deal with it. We, you know, we figure out how to deal with it and go on. I'm very energetic, so that's helped. Um, I, you know. Well, if I have migraines that can hit you out of left field. Yeah. You're on the set of Knots Landing. Yeah. I, I'm. That is really Lord. challenging. And you've been in this yeah. industry a very long time. Mm -hmm. So you're saying you were having that kind of pain for such a long time. Such a long time. The disc pain came on kind of suddenly last November, like it jostled into mm -hmm. the final depth where we needed surgery. Oh. I'd never even known about this kind of surgery in my life. Wow. It's, it's terrified. Walking through a door when you know they're going into your spine was the most terrifying moment of my I life. Know. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> But I'm very grateful. So okay. uh, if you uh -huh. have that kind of pain in your body, nerve pain, you just have to keep going and finding the doctor that will believe you. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and Wait, I think try. that's a very valuable um, message here. I had suffered with chronic back pain and mm -hmm. a lot of mine was caused. And a lot of people have back pain from mentally carrying their stress. You know, yeah. the brain programs mm -hmm. to hold on to that pain. And this is something you would understand. A lot of people mm -hmm. don't understand that and they mm -hmm. don't know how to work through that. And like mm -hmm. you or like Tim, you know, I could be feeling like 10 pounds of dog doo doo in a one pound bag. But if you're mm -hmm. booked, you show up. Yep. That's right. And none of us have the luxury of when I'm when I talk about the real world, when like I even talk to my family in the real world and right. they're like, well, you know, you need to stay home and take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. No, if I, I, the only way I won't be on a set is if I'm dead. Okay. If I can't. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, you know, I tell my young actors, you know, it's not like you are a receptionist where you can call in with a cold and right. so you can fill in. All in exactly. When you're late, it sets in motion a series of many people having to restructure if possible. Right. And right. I, I had an actress that was continually late and we did 30 demos in mm. one week we were doing all these demos and she saw what happened when our makeup artist decided not to show that morning because she was assisting she saw okay. that and then she saw the problem of the makeup kit not being with us on location and mm -hmm. she saw the problem of me having to switch to shoot on another spot and come back so she saw what happens when right. one person right breaks down one person in that chain that's right, right Jimmy. Uh -huh. exactly we yeah. all we really depend on each other even if we don't know each other when mm -hmm. i'm going like you you know there's going to be a crew there's going to be people for you right. people yeah. and meals and plan shots i might not know them but i respect the job and yeah. i know we got to be there exactly now have you have you ever had a moment like on set where um where the pain uh ruined the scene that you were shooting or anything have you, have you ever, oh my God, you yeah. are a pro. I'm I am able that. to commit to that and, and uh -huh. then I might feel it, but I know then I can work through it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Some other actors do too. I think Marsha Cross from Desperate Housewives uh -huh. yeah, also deals with severe migraine. I but I'm Marcia Marcia Cross does. She gets my, she gets severe migraines also. Yeah. What do you think makes you such strong stock, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, my daddy was a colonel in the army. Ah. <laughs> I don't know. I love this business. I love the people in it. I love the work itself. Right. So it just jack, you know, after a day of working, you're just jacked up on adrenaline and you can just go. Yeah. And your family, you know, and then, but sometimes I'll get home and I have nothing left to say. I'm like, I've said it all. It's all yeah. been said. Let me just <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean, there are times when, again, I can go, so, if I have a shoot or something, I'm feeling bad. I go do the shoot and again, like you said, it's an adrenaline. You step out there, you do what you're supposed to do. Right. You get the shot. Right. Then I go home and I just like collapse in pain. True. <laughs> That's our glamorous life, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, but at the end of the day, Tim, it's about creating the product. And yeah, I love working with Tim because, yeah. you know, he'll and always be there. He'll always be prepared. He can have mm -hmm. 10 things on his plate. And he will be prepared in one way or another, even if he has to do it on the, the train. I love working with people like that. Yeah. I think a big challenge for me often is, um, especially when we do live streams, when you get people that are not in the industry and don't always get that, you know, mm -hmm. that hey, you've got to be punctual. You've got to be mm -hmm. on time. Everyone's depending on you. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't get it. I would think now I, I know you mentor and, work and coach with actors yes oh, I, yeah what, what is your biggest challenge with so, some of them they can't all be like a lot of them may not get it what do you do with those well um i i work with them for a bit i'm a tough coach i work with them oh, so yeah. uh, i have had many many days where we have sat down and had a conversation uh one actress that was continually late i said you've built this reputation now building mm -hmm. it is very building it was easy breaking it down is going to be very hard so you Absolutely. need to find a different group of people that don't know you're always late and try wow. to build your reputation and i told Good. her you do not have long in this field you do not have long it's Absolutely. too small and you can't can't behave this way and she made a big change in her career big change yeah. Yeah. Yes. Now, by by mentoring, by mentoring, um, you are the founder of the Actors Audition yeah. Studio. Yes, correct? yes. Tell us a little bit about that. That it's my baby. Um, I have always <laughs> loved coaching, um, so I I have my own uh, acting program, and I work with those that want to be professional or need to be reguided. They're already professionals, so mm -hmm. we do acting work, and then we do mentoring and marketing. So it's a full mm -hmm. program. Wow! I, I just love it. Now, haven't you found this is going to be my rant for the day? Go ahead. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> boss. Thing, one good thing that kind of came through the pandemic was like the Zoom and the online yep. um, video auditions were rampant. Yeah. And I cannot deal with video video auditions. I'm one. I like to go into an audition with a director there going and ask, what are you looking for? Right. Because there are so many ways to say, oh, look, you can go, oh, look, or, oh, look, look, oh, look, oh, you look. know, what, 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 what am I, you know, and, and when you do a video audition, I'm the one that's making the choices. Right. I'm but so Jimmy, video you still, audition. you're still the actor making the choices. I'd love to chat with you because we were doing online auditions before a little bit. And mm -hmm. now basically they all are pretty yeah. much. Yeah. And right techniques and some tools that we use to prepare your scene and get ready to shoot it. And mm -hmm. it does work. And, and you are in charge of your character. So mm -hmm. love to help you. Wow. Out. Tim, I love Let's that see. you brought that up because yeah. this is a, a different spin. Um, like Tim, I do share that also. Oh, what nice. I don't like that has happened. The, the online audition, I'm fine with that. But now I have to art direct it. I have to mm -hmm. frame it. It's got to be right. lit a certain the way. Lighting, the lighting. Right. Costume. Then right. it goes in and then they tell you the more that they want. So what used to be a process, right. of, you know, just getting to the audition, my 10 minutes in the room and then back right. again. Now it's turned. I've got three sitting on my phone right now, Laura. I'm only going to get to two of them. Uh -huh. um, 
I find myself, I feel that, um, oh, this is going to come off wrong, but Tim probably feels this way too. <laughs> I feel as talent, we are really being taken advantage oh, of. Oh, hell yes. That, mm. they, that we're like cheap labor, that they're not going to hire the middle person anymore. You know, some of my casting director yes. friends are not working because yeah. now they can go directly to the actor and yeah. have them. and they can right. and they can mm -hmm. but i i mm -mm. i'm going right. to challenge you two puppies oh, good. i like mm -hmm. challenges we like you large talent I, I think that y'all have gotten into a little dome of deciding not to play the new game <laughs> and <laughs> okay. like the bottom line is the game is here and it's changed and we're yeah. still here Right. So we're, it's not going to go back all the way to where it was. It's mm -hmm. not It's too That's efficient true. this way. So I, I would just love to, to work with you a bit. I mean, really your, your set should be stationary. It should not be anything difficult to set up. It should already be set up. It's one mm -hmm. way. And then you work on your material and deliver that material. I think y'all, y'all are so talented. You just need to get, well, get out of your head. What I'm basing that on was a couple weeks ago, I had to do a video audition and take pictures, you know, for a full body and then right. have close up and all that and, and then upload it and all of that. The whole process, and I was busy that day, took me four hours because the hardest it part? Uploading, the phone wasn't uploading. So I tried it from the computer and then the mm -hmm. laptop and I, it, I don't have time to do all of this. And then... After all of that, they just went like next. Nope, don't like next. Right. I never because, heard anything back well, after four hours. We didn't Which hear anything. Game. That's we, would, game, but. we wouldn't hear on personal auditions either. I mean, it's just we do so much extra. It feels like so much is on us to do those auditions. That yeah. We feel now you should be able to get that process, the shooting itself. 30 minutes max to an yeah. hour for. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. It was the technical that was getting you that uploading. Exactly. Yeah. And that is, that is a problem. So, you know, um, you have to learn how to do it. I shoot with an iPad now. It's mm -hmm. high level quality as a camera. It's very easy. One button puts it in a file. Um, oh, nice. it, it does work and it works really well. But if you have mm -hmm. an iPhone that, that will do it for you too. Oh, yeah, that's what yeah. I use. No, I have an Android. Oh, uh, well, see, I don't know that one. But, yeah, if everything's well, set up and stable, you should be able mm -hmm. to knock it out pretty quick. Well, so the from, thing is, is I've done them before, and I can usually get it done. But for whatever reason, that four day, hour one it pushed wasn't, over the it edge wasn't connecting. It wasn't uploading. It wasn't just, mm -hmm. and I was just, I don't have time for this. No, <laughs> no, none of us do. And usually when we have a student that's got something like that, uh, Becca or one of the editors here, you just upload your film to them and they do it. They make, oh, the sweet. they make the files <laughs> and they attach it and off it goes. And, you know, it's very, very inexpensive. Yeah, because I, mean, I this, tell you, we need a person. <laughs> yeah, because at this point, I swear to God, I feel like I'm being the producer, the casting director, the lighting guy, the cameraman, the right. costumer, the makeup artist, the, the supervisor, yeah. the... <laughs> You are, but I think what, what are you guys doing? That's <laughs> definitely the way things are going. Now, from your professional perspective, you know, we used to get sides, right? And you right. went in and you mm -hmm. had like 10 minutes to look over your sides and then give your audition. Yes. Right. That pile, like that pile. Now, do you think that most clients expect us to memorize the audition? That's an interesting, that's, yeah. a, that's something we're fighting with a little bit. Um, uh, the, the problem that they see with reading with paper is that most actors don't know how to read the page. So they, the, most actors right. will hold the page and go oh. like this. So it's head bobbing. Uh huh. And th there's a technique that if you know how to read the page, they won't even notice the paper. So, mm -hmm. so I train them to be able to do that. And, and if they can't do that, then, you know, we work on memorizing the first line, the most critical lines and the end lines. Right. Okay. Um, but if you give an hour prep to an audition, that that's a good amount of prep. You should be able mm -hmm. to pull most, most sides are not too long, yes. but uh, I might, I myself and most of my actors use, use the sides. We just use them so naturally with practice and, and the way we read them. So mm -hmm. that's really the problem. The head bobbing is what bothers Cassie. Well, I have a little trick I'm going to share with both of you here today. Please do. I, I'll let my husband sometimes, you know, do the shoot. 
I tape, I write the lines on my paper and I tape it to Alan's stomach. <laughs> I need to borrow Alan's stomach one of these days. So not only is he there like that, he's yes. just laughing. Not only is he there like that, I have all my lines in everything. <laughs> Oh, you like that, Tim, right? I would love a picture of that with him. There, with, Laura, with there you go. That's my, my little tip <laughs> of my post-pandemic auditioning. Well, it's not even post-pandemic, but this yeah. is how yeah, you know, I usually dealing with it, however. Yeah, I usually I usually tape it on one side of the camera and on the other side of the camera. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. do that, too. There yeah. are all kinds of tricks. Like and with an mm -hmm. easel or, or something like that. So I, I so totally wanted to talk to you about Knott's Landing. Oh, yes. I did that <laughs> You were the girl everybody loved to hate. Yes, I yes. Thought, how, did, how did you play some? You're so, like, uh, angelic to me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, the, the I, I, the Knott's Landing brought me back several times. You know, I started as a two-parter and was off, and then they brought me back, and um, a character changed, and then they brought me back, and I stayed. And so the executive producer, David Jacobs, took me for a walk. And said, "We we want to take you into this mode, this this the character that people will hate. And how do you feel about that?" And I'm like, "I love it, <laughs> love it." <being here." laughs> and so I got to play out everyone's true thoughts about how to be speak awful. Wow, isn't that fun? I love yes. to play characters that are out of out of my character. Right. Those are the most fun. Oh my God. Right. They're so fun. They're so fun. It is so much fun to be bad. And it's hard to be bad. I love that. It's so much fun to be bad. Yeah. It's wonderful. In fact, I was working on some bad scenes with my actors last night where they had to get snarky and, and bad. And it goes against their, their actual mojo yeah. was not that. So we'd have to really work on condescending right. looks and yeah. hatefulness yeah. and thoughts and it was a great All the fun stuff it was. Well, you're watching if these walls could talk with your hosts wendy stewart and tim moss and our amazing and wonderful guest lar park lincoln yay um i just wanted to read a couple of the comments that are coming in oh, one yeah. um, uh emily and uh from ab studio says hello tim moss and wendy stewart Lar Park Lincoln, um, Felipe Rose, our good friend. He was the um, American, or he was the uh, Native American, Native American, and the Village People. Oh, the, the original. So Felipe, Felipe says hi, kids. And um, Apollo uh, Apollo Cabrera says hello. And Nick Lyon, our good friend Nick Lyon, yeah. says hi, everyone. Enjoying the show with the amazing artist Lar Park Lincoln. Entertaining oh. and so informative. Thank yes, you. <laughs> thank you. Whoever is tuning in, thank you so much today. Thank we you. always love our audience. Absolutely. Yes. Now, Laura, you are in Dallas. So um, you were saying earlier that, that there seems to be a, 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 a growing, the industry is really growing there oh, in geez. Dallas. So it sounds like you kind of got in, you're in at the well, a good position with your studio, with your yes, yes, studio. Yes. Yeah, it, you know, and and uh, it, it is. It's right now. There's a there's a flurry of activity, and you know, mm -hmm. sometimes they'll start a shoot here and move it to another state. That does happen. Yeah. But New Mexico is is happening. Of course, mm -hmm. Atlanta, um, Louisiana, still going strong. Oklahoma. So we just keep track of all of those castings here and do the best we can to get people on. You know. Mm -hmm. So it's some good local things. Some are SAG and some are not, you know, so uh -huh. we're, we're a non-union state. So it's always good when SAG comes to Texas. That's mm -hmm. always a good sign. Do you yeah. find it? Um, I found that the acting industry, when everything shut down in New York, March 12th, and lots of things stayed shut. Yeah. I watched our industry like literally within six weeks. Mm -hmm. Man, they found every rebound method, every loophole, anything to get them. And God bless them. Yeah. You know, any um, any test for COVID that had to be done. It was yeah. really quite incredible how the industry mm -hmm. was like, no, we're not going to be shut. We're going to make this work. I mean, that that yeah. is a credit to our industry. Mm -hmm. Yes, because, you know, I, I heard you speak briefly about being a, um, what is it called? Not a critical, essential worker. Yes. And mm -hmm. I had seen a wonderful text or meme about that. That's, you know, um, the next time you're in a pandemic, try not having any entertainment or television right. or music or, you know, we, okay. we are essential to people's lives. Entertainment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Make others feel good. 
Right. Mm -hmm. So it's an important job. It's an honor. Yeah, and, and the sad thing is, is in this capitalist society, the arts are not supported. Right. No. But yet during the pandemic, how did people survive? They tuned into Netflix. They watched movies. Mm -hmm. They right. listened to music. They they went yeah. to the art. Right. right. They did. Maybe, it, maybe coming out of it, it, it will have more support because I people will so. realize what it meant to them. Well, mm -hmm. I think Tim and Laura, even in terms of the actors, we all started doing these shows on Zoom. We call them mm -hmm. variety shows. I have never, I, I had such a blast. Yeah. It was, it was, it was weird and bizarre to me because I'm not going to lie. I'm not a technical person. I never was a computer person mm. like Tim. I love the audience. I want to touch you, feel you emote with you. And now I, you know, you end up, you're talking to the screen and there you are on a, on a zoom variety show. In my case, it was with an entire bottle of wine next to me. <laughs> I, was, I was so afraid I was going to pixelate or no one would hear me or I had to take myself off a of mute that on top of performing. And it, and it was very weird in the beginning, but it was something I not only ended up getting used to, I'm working with all of these people now. And that yeah. happened during the pandemic. How, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that's, that's right. A lot of things happened. You know, we, we just, as a studio, we did some fun little shows that were we shot via Zoom. And you we did. did things yeah. to stay connected mm -hmm. to each other. And and it worked. We did. We, we all hung in through it together. We, re nice. we really did. And, um, you know, it, it, it is the way we're shooting today. And it, it just is. So mm -hmm. y'all have to remember your challenge now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I know she's I tough, Tim. She's I absolutely like tough. She's she's not going to give us any wiggle room with that. <laughs> no, nope. you don't want to do these, you know, nope. auditions online. She said it. Well, okay. I'm ready we for the next one, and Tim. The two of you, uh, if if you don't change your mind and jump into it, that your talent's not going to get seen. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're right. totally right. Right. It's it's that's that's our job. And, so and we, Tim, yeah. even that four hour monstrosity that yeah. you did. They, mm -hmm. She's right. They saw you. They did. Yeah, they did. They at that least got to see you. You know what? I am not bitching not and moaning you. anymore, Laura. Yeah, you, know. you weren't driving for four hours in Los Angeles to get Thank anywhere. You. Yeah, so right. You saved all that time. <laughs> we weren't on a freeway. We didn't have to use gas. God damn it. We were in our own homes. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I want to talk again a little bit about the Friday the 13th. Yes. Okay. Um, let's talk about that. Was that one of your first major roles? Yes. In yes, a film? I, had oh, done, I love that. I had done uh, a film, TV films and movies right. and guest stars and things like that. And then this came along and because it was already such a big franchise, mm -hmm. it just continued to grow, which is amazing at this point, how much it's growing still, you know, yeah. appearances and, and just the crazed fun that people have with the yeah. series. Yeah. And that's exciting. You know? Yeah. And just to be a part of that, that's so great. It's and really so, fun. And, and, the, and the fact that that was one of your first starring roles yeah. is, so amazing. I mean, it'll always be special to you. Yes. It'll always be a special part of your life. Uh huh. Always, and always special. To come back 30 years later. That mm -hmm. was insane. <laughs> it's so cool, though. It's <laughs> so cool. So we shot Roseblood, which is considered a fan film, but it's a full film, 90 minutes. And the people okay. were amazing. They came to me and offered me a script and it wasn't quite right. So they redid it a little bit. And nice. I'm, I'm playing myself now at this age. And we have a young actress playing me right after that age, who's fat, fabulous, Jessica Hotman. Cool. And the director, Peter Anthony, was really fabulous. And it premiered this weekend. We had this wonderful fan event. Oh my God. How and, cool. it, and I love it. I, it was great. It was I, I love that you did this. What and makes a fan film? I, I'm not familiar with that. Term. Well, the studios that do the Friday, the 13th franchise are having legal problems. So mm -hmm. nothing's getting made with the series. <sighs> and okay. apparently they're allowing in some form, certain people to stretch the series and go in these directions so was, i don't know all the details about it but i was able to play her 30 years later and show not, how she transitioned and what so she so would a fan film would that be like they did um from the shining they did i can't think of the name of the movie that's out um uh it was like a continuation of the boy 30 years later yeah it might it might have been it had a completely and, different name yeah well yes so we were able my my friday the 13th was 
was Friday 13th, The New Blood. Right. And this one is oh, called right. Rose Blood. Ah. And, it's, and it has a younger girl coming in, right? Um, so it was really fun. And, and they they put them on YouTube, you know, that you can find uh -huh. it on YouTube and watch the whole show. And it's nice. oh, that's cool. Then I brought back, do y'all remember Terry Kaiser? He was the fabulous actor in um, Weekend at Bernie's. He played oh the my dead God. Yes, yes. I love that film. That was so twisted. So twisted. I was telling my younger students last night about it to, for them to watch it. And, uh, you know, Terry made this career out of playing a dead man so fabulously. <laughs> so great. And he, um, he he played the mean doctor in my film, the doctor oh, trying to, to come after me. And he gets killed in the first one. And I bring him back in Roseblood. I brought him back. <laughs> With my mind. Oh, I think you're telekinetic. You yes, and, and was she hallucinating or not? So that yeah. was fabulous. And I, oh, I, I would love to do a horror film like that, where especially with special effects, oh, where you can so just cool. move stuff with your mind. Or, oh, that would be great. That would be that so is, much fun. Did I you do a lot of green screen? Green screen? What was that? I'm sorry, Jim. Did you do a lot of green screen? No. Oh, yeah. Zero. Really? Wow. And neither one of them. Zero green screen. Wow. So you have makeup people that are, of course, completely skilled in. Yes. I, I yes. imagine there's makeup artists that specialize in sure. horror. Right, right. Well, we had a full special effects company, Amos Special Effects, and uh, it was all done as we were as we were working. So wow. there's one scene where I'm splattered a little bit and keep going, you know. And so that was it. And we had one shot to to get that look, and we did, and it was wonderful. So I What's was the most grotesque that? they've ever done to you in a horror film, like in terms of blood scarring or no, I haven't had it. I've been, oh. no, I'm, I, yeah, I'm literally untouched by the monster. I defeat the monster with oh. my mind. I don't run from him. I run towards oh, girl. him. That's what made her so interesting. So and, and so many fans love because it, I, uh -huh. I didn't run. I love it. Well, now tell us about Freddy's Nightmares. Uh, well, Freddy's Nightmares was a TV, TV series, which uh -huh. to me was my, um, what would you call it? Twilight Zone, right? It had the same. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Love, love. Loved it so much. And so I, I loved doing that series. And, and um, actually the director of my episode, Tom McLaughlin, directed a Friday the 13th. So that, oh, was, my gosh. that was cool. Yeah, very small uh -huh. community there. And I, uh, I played myself uh, also dead, looking and talking to myself. And oh, fine. Oh, that was really oh, fun. That, that would be cool. cool. You've had some really cool roles. I really have. I really I have. had a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, it truly, it, it's just, it, it is fun. Of course, you know, it's a lot of work. We know that to yeah. stay in, stay relevant and stay working. Yeah. But um it has been a really fun. Laura, what was the motivation behind starting the mentoring and, and the coaching? What inspired you to do that? Mm -hmm. I had, I had been coaching some people for a while in, in Los Angeles, New York and whatnot. And I needed to move back to LA. I mean, back to Texas. I had some school systems. I wanted my children in. Got so it. I, well, I moved yeah, back to the reality, school. right? <laughs> yes. The reality. Actually, my husband had passed away. Huh. Very young, and I had the two little ones. Oh, and, Mar, and, I'm yes. oh that's Mar. huge. Yeah, it was very, very difficult, very difficult for sure. Oh, and goodness. so I was shooting all the shows, and oh, my ring just fell off. Here's, I was shooting all the shows, wow. and um, I, I just needed to get around some family that were here in Texas. Mm -hmm. And I started seeing some of the auditions that were happening, and they weren't any good. These, these actors were not doing a good job, and it wasn't their talent, it was just a mishmash. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no. And so I just decided to actually go with a full studio of, of very uh, specialized mentoring coaching classes. Mm -hmm. But how did you do this with two? How old were your kids? Two and five. Come on. That's and, it. Oh. You know? Yeah. Wow. No, well, if, well, you just do. If you don't mind my asking, I mean, was it was it an accident or, no, or it sudden? Was, or It was cancer. Two years oh, of paralysis God, and cancer. Yes. Uh -huh. And I was working on QVC at the time. I was on QVC for 19 years. So oh, that was all live travel. But we did it. We just did it. Had a boy and a girl. Yeah, right. Fabulous. And uh, yeah. did it. But then, you know, I ended up with breast cancer. Stage oh three, my advanced goodness. breast cancer, and I have. I'm I sorry, stage that. two or stage three? Did you stage say? three advanced? Oh, gosh, um, that was a whew, that yeah. that one was was going to take me down. But I wasn't going to let my children be orphaned by the same disease their oh. daddy had been. So I had to mentally 
fight that a different way. Oh, Laura, you are using goodness. that telekinetic. I'm talking to you and listening to what you're saying. You're using that telekinetic ability in your real life on yourself. And let me tell you the stuff that you're sharing with, with everybody today. Mm -hmm. Girl, you are a force to be reckoned with. Absolutely. And, and, and seriously, bless you. You know, none of us have any right to feel sorry. You, you made me feel like my little piddly little complaints about the subway being messed up and everything. Forget it. You know, you are a force to be reckoned with and a real inspiration for everybody. Absolutely. I got to tell you. Thank Absolutely. You. Well, Thank you so and, much. And, and again, just like the advice that you gave us, which was a, a, a <laughs> mental direction, like yes. shift your thinking, right. shift it. Um, yes. Again, you have had to shift your thinking probably yeah. more than you thought you were able to do. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Yes, I have. I, I have my autobiography being done, and uh, it's called Lucky Girl. Uh huh. Wow. Because I've just felt, I've felt, regardless of what, what may have hit me, I feel very lucky mm -hmm. to have done what I've been able to do. I right. really do. Right. So, and, you know, they say you find the job you want, you know, and, 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 and gratitude is very yes. powerful. It is yeah. wonderful. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes it we is. totally believe in it and thanking in the universe and completely giving back. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I know you're doing that, that gala tonight. You're going uh -huh. to yeah. do that. And mm -hmm. that's so important and they're counting on you and, and you'll be there and do a beautiful yeah. job for them. As we mm -hmm. say, 150%. Tim, we have a really great clip to show. Wonderful. Okay. Um, yeah. I would, yes, I would love to. I, we'll take a look at the clip. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. You're watching. If these yeah. can talk with your hosts, Wendy Stewart and Tim Moss, our amazing, amazing. by far amazing guest, Laura, Laura Park Lincoln. Let's take a look at the video.
so much about it actors always say it was the hardest thing to do right is to be acting emotions without words mm -hmm. oh. every single nuance that you had had to show on your face yeah it was great yes well thank you super fun super fun y'all will have fun watching rose blood to see where how she changes over 30 oh. years and has to fight him again uh-huh and, and she does it with similar body movements but she has aged up with some strong movements that she oh i imagine she's yes. learned a thing or two over the last 30 years yes she's been held hostage in a mental hospital so oh, oh nice yeah nice. So she has enough of that uh -huh. <laughs> oh my god i just love it oh my Thank god you. how fun how Thank fun so <laughs> <laughs> and every, i swear to god every time you talk about oh that was 19 years ago oh that was third like you're talking by decades i'm like you look like you're 24 or something I know, exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's a good filter on your screen then <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much exactly so it's it, it is so in, incredible your amount of time in the industry successfully mm -hmm. yes. working. Uh, what's your what's your secret to it? I think loving it, first of all. Yeah. Really, passion. really loving it. The passion of it. Um, jumping in 110 percent always. That's just mm -hmm. the way we operate in our business. Right. And, and knowing that it's going to go like this. Mm -hmm. You're, you're going to have peaks. Peaks and valleys, and a yep. career is over time, not just mm -hmm. one show, right? So, uh, I worked with Jessica Lansbury and Michael Landon, Rod wow. Taylor, and oh and my god, yeah, look at this did, yes, wow, that was phenomenal, amazing, and and so you learn, you learn from the actors that have been doing it around. Absolutely, you. absolutely. See that that's that's my education is mm -hmm. is watching others and and learning and asking questions and yeah yeah, yeah. it's amazing that's, that's, important. that's important we do though live in such a society especially like from when you started to now there wasn't tiktok there wasn't instagram right your kids are all onto this or my daughter but right we didn't have that no and that's a game changer in that in that world everyone's beautiful they're filtered. And Tim and I talk about this um, all the time. I We've had to learn to use all that social media, and I do. Right. I just do not get the overnight sensation of the mediocrity mm. on TikTok. People yep. that are, you know, if yep. I get hired as an influencer or any of you two, it's because of our pedigree and amount of time in the business. Or right. Or QVC. I right. do shopping for Spiegel. We know how to sell stuff, right? Right, right. But you see this thing with influencers. I go up for auditions. I'm sure you've had this happen too, Tim. They wanted my Instagram handle. Yes. I want, what the hell does that have to do with the price of eggs? See how your followers. Yeah, they, followers they want are. they want those numbers. And they want they, those numbers, exactly. The numbers. And if it comes down to a couple of actors, I have seen the one less qualified with more social. Uh, yep. I have uh, seen that. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. Me too. But uh, we just, you know, I just work with uh, actors on a program of getting that social media nice and clean and polished. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't really do the TikTok. I mean, actually, I don't. That isn't my thing. But uh, I have learned to keep my Instagram current and yeah, and mm-hmm. hopefully inspire people with it. You know, like right. yours. Yeah, like like you're doing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, since we're on the subject, what are your? How can people reach you? How can they find you on your social media? Well, on social, uh, the Instagram is is my name, Lar Park Lincoln. I don't have to worry about that being taken very often. No, no. <laughs> Lar Park Lincoln will find me. Uh, and uh, also uh, Facebook, Lar Park Lincoln or Lar Park Lincoln Acting Studio. You know, I'm pretty easy to find. You can find mm-hmm. me and uh, say hello and jump on my Instagram and give me a few more organic people. Follow. Yes, right, right. Yes. Yeah, I was, I was only going to follow you on your I- Instagram. I'm I she's the last model it. standing. <laughs> I think I, I, yeah, I think I, I think I did yours early in this morning. I do. Cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think so. Now, Lars, Lars Park Lincoln, is that your real name or where did that come from? Yes. Well, Lar came from Lari. It came from Lari. So I didn't use Lari. I just, it was shortened in the household to Lar. Uh-huh. And wow. Park was my maiden name and Lincoln was my married name because I kept okay. them together. I didn't, it was, it was kind of unusual then, I guess. And mm-hmm. so it just, I just ran them all together. I never thought twice about it. Never thought uh-huh. it would be an, an interesting name to some. So. Oh, yeah. It's fabulous. A fabulous oh, it's a perfect name. stage name. Uh-huh. And it hasn't been staged, which is <laughs> so incredible. So your, um, your ability as an actress, did this something shine when you were a little kid that your mm-hmm. parents brought out in you? Does someone else mm-hmm. in your family do this? Never had anyone in the family go into the biz or the arts. I, I knew in around third grade that it's what I wanted to do. You did. And yeah. And so um, I, I wasn't a show putter on her. Like I know a lot of kids do. Yeah. I would do fashion shows and all those little things. And as I kept growing up, my family realized that, that I was going towards a serious acting kind of career. Wow. There wasn't anything then to get started with. There were no mentors you could call. Right. How are you going to meet somebody? We didn't have any way to connect with anyone. Where, and where did you grow where up? You, yeah, that was yeah. what I was going to ask. Where did you Army grow up? family. So it okay. was Texas, Colorado, Wyoming, California. There wasn't. There weren't acting bits in there. Right. So I started modeling. And I'm short. I'm 5'4". But I shot well. And mm-hmm. I ended up uh, getting picked for some some good modeling ads and campaigns. And I did that for eight years. Uh-huh. And then I was able to make a move to L.A. and and start the acting career. Mm-hmm. Now, did you come from a big family or how many how many brothers and sisters? Yeah, yeah I had I had uh, two brothers and sister. They were all uh, 10 and 13 years older than me. Oh, wow. Oh, oh you were a baby. Yes, I'm kind wow. of a baby only because they were yeah. gone, right? So yeah. I was the baby, the only, and the oldest. Oldest uh-huh. junior. All at the same time. Uh, <laughs> yes. And my daddy was a colonel and their daddy was a captain. Oh, wow. So, uh-huh. You know, because time had passed and he got promoted. Right. right. That's wow. really funny. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yes, uh-huh. my dad did Vietnam oh. and World War II was my daddy. Wow. Oh, my God. The, the whole yeah, what very a, impressive. What yes. a legacy to grow <laughs> up with. So being um, an army brat, as they say, yes. did, were you constantly forced to make new friends and adjust mm-hmm. to situations? Yes. Yes. And what's good about today is that the kids can keep up with people with just a phone or a tap. Right? Yeah, yeah. Then we had to write letters and exactly. call. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't Calling was so expensive, remember? Yeah, we couldn't call long distance. Yeah. No, you had to wait till Sunday at like one hour. Right. You know? I mean, we had party lines, other people using the same phone line. Kids can't imagine. So they keep up with everyone nicely. And it was a challenge. You know, you only carry a few with you when you haven't Mm -hmm. kept up. But that is the military life. You stay a couple of years and you move. Mm -hmm. And you were able to adjust. Obviously, there's something about you that let you, you could go to a new school and make new friends and you have yeah. that thing about you. Not every kid can. No, maybe not. But I but I do find that uh, kids that have to go to a lot of schools, like you say, they will either adjust or they'll have trouble, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. But they, there are a couple of careers that are similar to acting. Two careers that are the same personality of acting, and that's a real estate agent is the <laughs> same personality. And a lawyer is the same personality. Yeah. Um, where they go, 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 like we do. Don't make money. 
and then finally we yeah. make money and it has to pay for all the going we did backwards and all the going Absolutely. forward. Yeah. And they're all, all storytellers. That's yes. right. So <laughs> uh, you often will find actors within those professions, you know, yeah, actors back there, same That's personality. Yeah. Or politics. No, I don't know. Oh, yeah, you have to be a lot of times they live in a fictional world. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good point. Live in a fictional world, and and I'm not even in a fictional world compared to that. (laughs) So, Laura, I know you said upcoming your autobiography is coming. Yes, yes. When can we expect to see that? What are we in right now? Uh, First of December today. uh, Yeah, the end of yeah, the end of 2021. Maybe late spring, summer, probably. Oh, like that. Yeah, yeah. Good you. That yes. would be a lot of fun, I think. Well, we'll have to have you back on to promote it. How about that? that? Would be fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll be blessed. Yeah, y'all are just very lighthearted and fun, and I, I'm sure your fans are all the same. You know, <laughs> just, it's like chatting with you in our own home. Yes. Yeah, that's what we like. And, yeah. and believe me, if we weren't live streaming and we had a huge budget, you would be chatting with us in our home. Yep, absolutely. That's right. That's <laughs> right. On the couch with a bottle of wine. That's just the way I like it. <laughs> that's right. It's Do always you have um, big plans for the holidays this year? We're kind of in this weird nowhere's land with this pandemic, mm-hmm. right? Do we do this? Do we do that? You know, we were right. just like starting to feel our oats and things are really quite good in New York, opened up, people yeah. are vaccinated here. We are living our lives pretty well again. Yeah. And then they bring this new thing now from yeah. South mm-hmm. Africa. That So it's just kind of like, okay, mm-hmm. what's my game plan going to be? There were a bunch of places that I had wanted to travel to that are now on the list not to go to. Mm-hmm. I know. I what know. is what are your plans going forward? In well, I'm really world? lucky that my daughter Piper Lincoln has uh, given me my first granddaughter, my first oh, granddaughter. Oh, oh, you're not- wow! Oh my God, how and wonderful! They live in France, so oh. she just came home. So I have them here, and her husband. Oh, her- wonderful! Oh, how nice! So okay, that's congratulations. Been- yes, thank you. It's been that's- very fun. Oh, I imagine. And and yeah. um and her husband is French Lebanese and he's been here for ten Christmases in a row. Uh-huh. And my uh-huh. son is a couple hours away and his and he'll drive uh-huh. in with his wife. So oh. we have this little group and we'll, that, be, we'll be just fine. That is what the holidays should be. Really? That's wonderful. Yeah. Yes. Who knows? She might walk in with her. I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, everybody's welcome on the show. I always tell people if you have a dog or and you want to put the dog on yeah. the camera, please. And Charlie, my poodle, I, oh, yeah, I, I poodle. like standard. Po- Do you have a poodle too? I have a long haired chihuahua, but I love standard poodles because they're brilliant. They're so Kim, those beautiful. were the smartest dogs in the world. So smart, beautiful. I've always had the standards. My last one passed away. Oh, and gosh. so I have a little one, Charlie, but he just went to the beauty shop. <laughs> Charlie is getting uh yeah, he's, he's getting, he's getting some, some fixing. He needed a little, <laughs> little, little do. So he's at the beauty shop. So he, but he can, normally, as soon as we turn on the light, he goes and stands in front of it. And the actors are standing there and Charlie stands in front of it. And we have to scoot him over. That's so funny because he sees them. I, I totally believe yeah. animals yeah. get that. He goes, oh, light. And he'll yeah. get right. And we have so many pictures. He'll get right in front of them. <laughs> he found his light. Right. Yeah. Yes. right, Tim. I think Charlie may have a brilliant career in front of him. I he, like he just Charlie. May. Yeah, he has his own Instagram. He does. And everybody knows Charlie. He's very, very insecure and loves me very much. So it's a relationship. That's all I can say. <laughs> You're so funny. Insecure, um, but loves me very much. Yeah, I'll I'll drink to that. <laughs> My chihuahua is like Velcro chihuahua. He's, he is too. I, this is terrible, but I'm going to share this with you guys. I never want my daughter to hear me say this, but you know, in um, in Mexico, hundreds of years ago, the Mayans were buried with their chihuahuas when they died. Mm-hmm. I look at Nugget and I go, when Nugget goes, mama's going to go too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I got a poodle. All right. And we have, oh, another comment. Joe Preston, perfectly enlightening. Laura, yes, you're perfectly enlightening. This was such a terrific show. Yeah, it's very nice. Very um, nice of them to come on. Thank, thank you. you. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in Great to show. If These Walls Could Talk with your host, Wendy Stewart and Tim Moss, <laughs> and our very enlightening 
amazing <laughs> um, superwoman, super um, special <laughs> guest, Laura Park Lincoln. Thank you so much just Thank for you. sharing everything, yeah. sharing part of your stories from your life and just yeah. all that you've shared in cinema. Thank you. This has just Thank been you absolutely so much. Just so great. And we will tell everybody you can catch her film Rosebud on YouTube. Yes. 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 It is the yeah. fan film for the Friday the 13th film. So yes. it picks up 30 years later. From when I, may, I may be tuning in tonight after I get back from the gala. Yes. You will have fun because I love you very strong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lar Thank Park you Lincoln, so much. So much. Been Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>